In this module, you will learn about the total economic value or TEV concept. We will introduce and discuss appropriate methods according to the total economic value concept. These methods include non-demand based methods, revealed preference methods, stated preference methods, benefit transfer, and value in the different types of ecosystem services. We will also include aspects of study design, sampling plan, and survey instruments. The total economic value concept fits into step four of the ELD's six plus one approach. The total economic value framework is the most common framework used for environmental valuation. It is anthropocentric because it is based on how society values goods and services. When evaluating ecosystem services, changes in society's welfare associated with a gain or loss of environmental goods and services are measured. The changes represent benefits or costs to society as a result of the change in environmental service provision. The TEV concept provides a simple conceptualization of the different types of economic values. It serves as a basis for categorizing the different valuation methods, and it can help measure ecosystem services that do not have a market price, but still play indirect roles in the market. Some valuation methods capture use value, and others capture the use value plus varying components of the non-use values. This provides a holistic social societal perspective rather than a purely market-based financial one, and it can provide useful insights for novel and alternative market establishment and development. The TVE then is the total economic value, which is basically the use value plus the non-use value. And the use value is the benefit derived from use of environmental goods or services. And this use can be direct, indirect, or optional. The non-use value are values allocated by society to goods and services, but do not stem from the use of these goods and services. For example, there can be an existence value, existence of the environmental good or service, a bequest value, the environmental state passed on to the next generation and subsequent generations, and the stewardship value, which is the maintenance of a healthy environment for all living organisms. This figure is a diagrammatic representation of how the total economic value is split into a use value and a non-use value. And under the use values, we have the direct use, the indirect use, and the optional use. And under the non-use value, we have the existence, bequest, and stewardship value. This slide shows some examples of those different use and non-use values. This figure shows the link between the use and non-use value and the four categories of ecosystem services, provisioning, regulating, cultural, and supporting services. Detail on the appropriate methods used in a TEV study can be found in the associated script and the links provided at the end of this presentation. Basically, there are three types of valuation methods. One, a non-demand-based method. Two, demand-based revealed preference methods and three demand-based stated preference methods. Starting with non-demand-based methods, these do not involve the estimation of a demand curve. That is a graph that shows the relationship between the price of a service and the quantity of the service demanded for each service. What is measured here is the change in welfare associated with the change in the cost of provision. Demand-based methods are based on the estimation of a demand curve, and you can find out more details on demand curves in the scripts. The demand-based revealed preference methods are revealed preference methods that rely on actual behavior in existing markets. 
examples of the hedonic price and the travel cost method. Demand-based stated preference methods rely on stated values of services not usually purchased and sold in actual markets. Examples are contingent evaluation, which is the willingness to pay or accept, and choice experiments. This figure shows the relationship between the different methods and the different types of value, the use value and the non-use value. The next two slides outline four non-demand based methods, starting with the market price method, which estimates the economic value of ecosystem products or services that are bought and sold in commercial markets. The market price method can be used to value changes in either the quantity or quality of a good or service. Secondly, the replacement cost method, which is the value of an environmental service measured by how much it would cost to replace it with man-made systems. For example, a nutrient cycling waste treatment plant can be replaced with costly treatment systems. The third non-demand based method is the damage cost avoided method, which estimates the value of ecosystem services based on the cost of avoiding damages due to lost services. And finally, the fourth method is a dose response method, also called a change in productivity approach. This considers the environment as a factor of production and measure, for instance, foregone profits due to decreased production as a cost of decrease of environmental service. The next two slides illustrate four demand-based methods, starting with hedonic pricing, which is the service demand may be reflected in the prices people will pay for associated goods. For example, house prices may be higher alongside parks where the environment is healthy. The second is the travel cost method. Service demand may require travel whose cost can reflect the implied values of the service. For example, recreational areas attract distant visitors whose value placed on that area must be at least what they're willing to pay to travel to it. The third method is contingent valuation where the service demand may be elicited by posing hypothetical scenarios that involve some valuation of alternatives. For example, people willing to pay for increased forest preservation. The fourth is a choice experiment, also called choice modeling or conjoint analysis. Makes respondents explicitly choose between alternative scenarios. These scenarios include levels of environmental or non-environmental attributes and a level of payment which varies between scenarios. And finally, we have the benefit transfer method, which offers a cheap alternative to other valuation methods by reusing already available information. It consists of transferring economic values from one case study with a known non-market economic value to a similar site to be valued in economic terms. The study should have evaluated the same goods and services within a similar geographic setting. This is a useful table to help you to identify which method corresponds with a particular ecosystem service. So on the left hand side we have the list of ecosystem services and then the other uh, columns show the most appropriate method for valuation and the ease of transferability across sites. To help you further understand the different types of valuation methods, there are examples for each of the evaluation methods and case studies in which these are applied in the ELD website. You can also watch the video of the Conservation Strategy Fund on the valuation of ecosystem services, here shown in the link on the slide. Some pointers on study design, sampling and survey instruments can be found in the script of this module. It is important to avoid double accounting by not aggregating competing ecosystem services 
or by counting intermediate and final ecosystem services. So before doing your research, ask yourself again, what do I want to know? Why do I want to know this? Who am I going to ask? And how do I go about getting my results? A few pointers on sampling design and survey method. The sample of participants should be representative for the whole population and all stakeholder groups need to be considered. Variables on the participant sides would include income, age, level of education. Every member of the stakeholder population should have the same chance of being picked for the survey. On survey methods, you should consider including either questionnaires or face-to-face -face interviews in your survey design. Face-to-face -face interviews often ensure a higher level of responses and help better assess the respondent's understanding and commitment to the problem of interest. Questionnaires are often more time and cost efficient since multiple participants can partake in a survey simultaneously or they can even fill out on online, but questionnaires facilitate collection of numbers for quantitative analysis. Please be aware that there are many criticisms related to the economic valuation methods. For example, non-use values are not always easily materialized in actual financial capital. Potential biases exist in the assessment of economic values. You can get overly high expectations over future financial gains. You can get loss of stakeholder motivation when promised or expected gains do not materialize. Or you can be unable to capture the shared and cultural dimensions of sustainable land management. The TEV concept is not as easy to apply in practice. The difference between the types of values is often fuzzier in real life. Please note that further reflections on each appropriate method can be found in the script for this module. Further information and reading on this topic can be found in the links shown in this slide. You will surely have questions on, on this module, so please look at the links shown on this slide.